I'll start up Emacs. Guess I can make it full screen. I'm gonna try to make me a coin flip. Little game. Uh, what dev package? Uh, I wanna say, but I don't know this for sure, that when I'm using this dev package that I've been using, this is good for someone who has like Quick Lisp. But if someone doesn't have Quick Lisp, I think I read somewhere that it's not gonna be, they're not gonna be able to load my packages unless they have Quick Lisp. And there's a UIOP way to do this, but I have no idea. I've never looked into it, so I might have to look into that and check that out. And I think most modern lifts have UIOP. Therefore, someone would be able to load this even if they don't have Quick Lisp. I don't know if this works with ASDF or not. So this might just be for a Quick Lisp, but it might be for either one. But then I think most modern common list have ASDF too, so I don't know. Like I said, I'll have to look into that. And I'm just going to call my function flip it, I think. At some point, I need to try this without doing that first. Oh, I'm trying to save a file. Uh, let's see. See, I think I was putting all the stuff in WW for whatever reason. Call this coin flip. Our lisp. And I didn't start sly up, so let me do that. Meta X or Alt X. And then I'm going to type sly. Hit enter and sly will open up. And I'm going to hit control X, control O. Actually, I found this little thing. Is it called keycast maybe? Yes, yeah, keycast. I think there's a keycast mode. When I turn on keycast mode, now whenever I type down here, I can never see. I know this like right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. I'm always dragging my cursor around, not highlighting stuff, and it's hard to see where I'm pointing at. But down here at the bottom where it says mouse one, it's gonna show like what I'm typing. So if I say control A, control E, eh, there's one way to see it. The problem with that is it only works in the buffer I'm in. So now when I'm typing, it's not going to do it anymore. So I can say Alt X and then key cast mode here. And then now it'll do it for this one also. And then where's it showing now? Did it say it was disabled? I don't see it doing it in either one now. I guess it did it down here. So I turned it off. Alt X, key cast mode. And then down here, it's doing it. If I come up here, it's not doing it. So if I say Alt X keycast mode, is it going to turn it off again? Maybe I did it too fast last time. And then now it turned it off. Okay. I thought that was going to work. If I put it up here, just do it there. So there's another one Alt X keycast. Is it tab mode, tab bar mode? And then now it's going to be over here in the corner up top. But at least it'll work. Control A, Control K. And then now it's going to do it for both of them. I thought I could turn it on in both windows. Uh, I wonder if I made it full screen though. Just Control X, 1. And then now if I say this, I'm just going to try this real quick. You cast mode. And then now it's doing it here. And if I say control X B, I get to the last buffer and just hit enter. So now it'll do it for two windows. So I guess when the window split, it won't do it. So control X two to split my window again. And actually I'm gonna say control X one and control X three to split the window the other way. Since I'm here in full screen. The only thing I don't like about this is now it has this thing, the file I'm on here. It's like wasting space up top. But now this one's working for both files. So I guess by making the window full screen and then doing it, now it works for both of them down at the bottom also. So I guess now it's at the bottom and the top. I'll just leave it like that, I guess, and try it out. 
although it's doing some real estate at the top. Uh, and then we need to go in package. And then coin flip. Dash flip. Flip, click, flip. And then I'm going to save my file. Control X, Control S. And I'm going to hit Control C, Control K to compile the whole file. Save the file first. I'm going to hit Y for yes. And then Control C, Control K. Again, it won't bug me because it's already saved. And I'm to switch between the buffers, I'm saying Control X, O, Control X, and then O without the control. So Control X, O, Control X, O. Uh, to save the file, Control X, Control S. There's another way to get over there, which is Control C, Control Z. And that jumps me over to my REPL. But I don't like the way that works. Uh, as you see, I had my REPL over here already, and now it swapped it around. So Control C, Control Z, I don't use it enough to, for it to be predictable to me. So I'm gonna hit Control X, B, and then hit, no. Like I'm gonna hit Enter to go to my message window, and then I'm gonna hit Control X, O, to come over here, I'm gonna hit Control X, B, and then the default down here is my Sly M REPL. So I'm just gonna hit Enter, else I can type just M REPL whatever, and hit Tab, because it will like, not just tab completed, but whatever they call it, whenever it can figure all that, and then hit Control X, B, again, to get back over to my file. Control X, O, Control A, Control K to kill that trash I had over there. Like fuzzy completion is what I was thinking of. So Control X, S to save a file. I probably didn't need to, but I did hit return. All right, so uh, Control X, O, if I hit Control L, it just kind of recenters where this stuff is at. So it's not actually kill, clearing the screen, but it does, if it was longer, it would go all the way down to the bottom. So there's a middle, top, and bottom. And the bottom happens to be halfway through the page. Control L is in the middle again. Uh, I'll try to stop being at the bottom of my page a lot, which someone pointed out when you pause the video on YouTube, I can't see the bottom of the stuff. So I'll try not to do that this time. Uh, there is something I've never even talked about, which if I hit Meta X, Alt X, Sly, Scratch. And then Sly has a scratch pad, so you can type in, into it. And then, uh, like, if I was to say plus one, two, I could hit Control J, and then it'll put the output there. Uh, if I was to say plus one, two, and hit Control X, Control E, it'll evaluate that, and it puts it down here at the bottom. Uh, I can't mouse click this because it's going to go away but down here at the bottom it says three so it's showing you what that is and then there's another one called uh control meta x and that will do the same thing it puts it down here at the bottom the difference being that uh if i was to say like plus one two and then let's just say times three four right here right if i hit control x control e what it's going to do is grab the sex B or S expression or form before the cursor and run it. So I can't hit control X E in the middle of this right here, let's say. In this case, I can because four evaluates to four. So you see the four down here. But if I'm right here, I hit control X E it's only going to do this inner part because it's grabbing the form or I'm just going to call it a sex P S expression. The sex P right here is going to evaluate that. But if I do the other one, control alt X or control meta X and hit it, then it's going to do the whole form. So it'll take the whole top level form, let's say, and run it. And then you can always say control C, control C, which compiles it. And in this case, it, there was no output because compiling this didn't spit anything out. But if I was to be at the front of that and say print, let's say, and then now if I hit control C, control C, it's not showing it in this particular thing because it's throwing that inside the REPL. So I'm gonna hit control X, B to get back to my REPL. And you see the 36 sitting here, right here. Uh, all this junk that you see right here, it might be too late, but what I could have done earlier is hit control C, control O 
and it'll clear the last trash that the ripple spit out, let's say. Uh, so control XL to get back over here. And that's just the way I prefer to get around rather than hit control C, control Z, which is like the slide default to do that. So now I'm gonna put a seed. Uh, let's just say like seed, random state. And then I'm gonna say set F, random state, and then make random state T for true. And then right here I could hit, I just hit control C, control C most of the time. Uh, it says compile and loaded, but I don't know that, like this is actually compiling stuff all the time. It's also evaluating it. Uh, like def parameter normally, you're not gonna compile variables, let's say, but control C, control C will still evaluate it. Uh, but I could also hit, like in this case, cause I'm at the end, control X E, like I said before. And then you see the output of that stuff that it chunk chunks out. So that's like the random state that it's running, which when I compiled it, you didn't get to see that as much. And notice this is in the slide descriptions. So I just clicked on that window and hit Q to get out of that. And I could also hit the meta X E in that case, cause I could be anywhere and do that. So control E to get to the end of the line and hit enter. Uh, now, I guess I'll just make a, like an intro prompt and I'm just going to say flip times, how many times it flips, how many times I flipped a coin. I could say flip times, but I want to use that variable later and I don't want it to be the same just so it's maybe less confusing of which one I'm referring to, let's say. And so this is just going to be some format, some, I guess that's why I'm calling it intro. And then the first thing I want to do is put a new line there and I'm going to put the new line there no matter what. If I only wanted to put a new line there, if there wasn't already a new line, then I can use an ampersand right there. But in this case, no matter what happens, just give me a new line. Uh, and then coin, let's say tilde A. Uh, I don't know what that stands for. I'm just gonna say it stands for aesthetic, for like, for like human readable. If you put an S here, I just call it sex B, S expression. I don't know what it really stands for, but it might be that. Uh, but the S will mean that it's printing out for Lisp to read stuff back in, but I don't want Lisp to be able to read this back in. I just want to print it out to the user. So I'm using A for aesthetic. And the, I'm not saying for sure that's what it means. And then flipping coin, how many times? If I quip, flip it one time, then time should not be plural. But if it's zero, it should be plural. Or if it's anything else, it should be plural. So what I'm going to do is put a... Hmm, tilde colon p and i notice a lot of people which i never do this a lot of people do these as capital letters which i should probably start doing just because other people do it that way it doesn't matter maybe for readability people less people common list people prefer this i don't know that for sure but i often see people capitalizing these things but uh i'll probably forget to do it later so i'm just going to be consistent to myself at the moment until i know better and then after this, I want a new line. So that's tilde percent. And then it's gonna be flip times. And then I'm gonna save that and hit control X, control O to come over here, just to show this right here. So format T. And if I say um, tilde A, and I've explained this in another video, but I'll explain it again. Uh, and then I'm talking about like, how many heads there's gonna be, let's say. So if I put head here, like over here I'm saying times, flip times, but oh, well, that's what I'm doing here too. So let's just do it like this, tilde. And then I'm gonna hit tilde P instead of the tilde colon P, and then put a new line there, else it's not gonna do that for me. And now I'm gonna hit 
let's say I want to flip the coin zero times. And then in this particular case, I have to put the zero there twice. And notice it says zero times. So I, so I did something zero times. Now, if I want to do something one times, I can change this and it's going to be time because one's not plural, one time. But notice it still says zero here. So what I have to do is put a one here because there's two format directives, I guess. I think I've heard those directives called something else in Blisp, but I don't remember what the other name is they call it. Uh, I'm just going to call it directive because I think in a lot of languages they use that. So there's one format directive here, let's say, and one right here. I'm pointing again without highlighting. Uh, so it expects two. And then it's going to say one time, one time. And so if I want to say 10 times, I'd have to switch both of these, let's say. So now it's 10 times. So of course it's annoying to do that. So what I can do instead is put this colon here. I don't know what it's called on this, but it's like backtracking. So it's just saying like, now if, now if I come over here and hit zero, it's still gonna be plural, but if I hit one, it's gonna be, I don't know why, is it like my screen's blinking? It might be because of this thing being on. Uh, I don't like it blinking like that, but yeah, let me just, oops. Let me just do this real quick to see if that fixes that or not. Uh, also, and if I hold the Windows key down and throw it down, if I keep holding the Windows key down and don't do anything else and hit the up arrow key, then it brings it back without me having to go click on something. If I were to let go of that Windows key or click on something else, then that won't work. Uh, and just see if that stops it from flipping. No, it's still blinking. But, oh well. I'll just leave it like that because I'm using the screencast. Uh, and so that's what this little colon right here is doing is just making it to where I don't have to type that out twice. And that's why I added it over here. So I'm gonna hit control L to get back up away from the bottom of the screen. And then it's control XO. I'm trying to alt tab the other side. Control A to get back to the front because it was messed up. And then make sure I have a new line there. I did. So format T and I missed my T right here. I didn't know this before. Uh, and then uh, I'm just going to say like how many times will it land on the heads? Let's say and on heads. And then I want another new line and something's missing. I could tell something was missing because it wasn't indented correctly, I guess. Format T. And then let's just put a little prompt here. And then, well, I don't know if it's doing this because I'm separating it or not, but a lot of times if you don't type finish output, I know when it's all in one function or in, all in one loop, it won't always show this stuff before the prompt. So I'm just forcing it. That finish output's just forcing, forcing all that stuff to output before it does anything else. And then uh, I want to try to do some stats too, but maybe I should actually do my flip it function first. So let's just say defund, flip it. And then this is going to be optional if you don't tell it. Uh, if you don't tell it how many times to flip, then I just want to flip times once. So I'm going to make flip times v1. And what this is doing is saying that this variable flip times is optional. If I don't tell it what to do, then just make the flip times one. And then I'll call my uh, intro prompt, which I didn't compile. 
So control C, control K will compile the whole file. Control C, control C, we'll just compile this one function right here. And right down here at the bottom, it tells you that it's compiled and loaded. There's no warnings. Uh, control C, control C compiles just this one function. Control C, control K, which I haven't closed my fun yet, so it'll mess up if I do that, probably. Uh, so I'll hit Control G, because down here it says Control C, because I hit that already. So I'll hit Control G to cancel that. And what I'm trying to say, which is if I hit Control U first, before Control C, Control C, or Control C, Control K, I want to see you can hit Control U, Control C, Control C. And this just compiled this also, and it doesn't say any difference. But if you hit Control U first, before one of those, it compiles the function with max debug settings, which it's not a big deal right now. But if I was trying to debug this stuff, and it was popping me into the debugger, let's say, and I wasn't getting enough information, I could, instead of saying Control C, Control C, I hit Control U, Control C, Control C, and then it's gonna, uh, put the max debug settings. You can do that with like a declaim or a declare. I think it's a declaim and put it in the function and tell it, or at the top even maybe you could do that for the whole file, but you can do that individually also inside Sly. So uh, another thing that's kind of tacky right now is I can't tell the difference. Like if I hit control A and control E, well, let me close this one. Control A and control E, you can't tell where I'm at. If I hit control E, can barely see the cursor right here. But if I hit Control A, I can't see it at all. So I guess that's the only way to tell is when I first switch there, you can see this little difference right here, which you might be able to might might not be able to tell. So at some point, I have to fix the way it's highlighting these things so they're a different color or something, or one's lighter. Maybe I need to take change my cursor to the big blinking block or something. I don't know. Uh, I know I'm going a little slower, but people have complained about. Most, most people not explaining how to get around an Emacs. So control X, control S is to save. Uh, I don't know, like I also hit control alt less than and greater. It jumps to the top of the file and the end of the file. I think I'm just gonna explain stuff as I go and then maybe later I'll do a better one. I'm hitting control K to get rid of the, all the little new lines at the end. Control K kills the line you're on. Uh, like in Linux, you can hit Control U to delete fort, which I wish Emacs had, but it doesn't by default. Uh, and then I want to call the intro prompt above. So it prompts the user. And it's going to prompt the user. And here, this is flip times. But now down here, I'm actually gonna call it flip times because that's what I'm calling it here. And that's why I just named it like this to show a difference between the two. It doesn't matter, I could have called it the same way up top, but I just wanted to show the difference between that. So I'll say flip times. And so now this flip times is gonna be this flip times here, let's say, with a default of one. Uh, and then I'm going to wrap this in a let. And so I'm going to say user guess. And then here I'm going to say read line, which read line always takes its input as a string. So even if I hit numbers and stuff, it's just going to be a string. And then I'm gonna keep up with the count of the heads. So when I hit say head count is zero, I'm not gonna really worry about tails at the moment. And then I usually don't put uh, blank lines, but I don't know what's preferable. So since I'm inside a loop, I'll just separate those for now to see the difference between the let and the loop, I guess. So for, let's say flips from one, because there's not gonna be zero flips. I don't wanna start counting from zero uh, flip times. So however many flip times someone puts, and then you don't close that. So I'll go to the next line. And then 
you have an if, which is the common lisp if, but you also have an if inside the loop, which is the if for loop, which doesn't have a parentheses in front of it. So of course, loop is funky. Uh, it's its own little DSL inside Lisp. So it doesn't really look like Lisp and a lot of people don't like it. So let's say random two, since there's only two sides to the coin I'm using. And then if it equals zero, because uh, random is going to start with, from zero. So I'm going to say if it equals zero, then we want it to be do. Uh, like I can't just say ink f here. I have to put the do in front of it because I'm inside the loop. So I'm going to say uh, ink f head count, which is a variable I put up top right here. Uh, we're going to increment that if it lands on zero. And then because there's no parentheses inside this, I am going to put another new little blank line here. And so then, uh, let's say if equal flips, flip times, and notice it. I didn't know how to indent that before because of the if, but Emacs will automatically indent stuff after you hit return if it's not already indented correctly, let's say. So a lot of times I'll just ignore the indentation. I could hit tab, but whatever, like I can just ignore it. So we'll say do format T and then here I'm going to say if there's not already a blank line, add a blank line. This right here, like I said before, is a new line. This right here is going to say, if there's not a new line when this is output before this, then go ahead and add one. If there already was a new line, and it will not add another one. If I put the percent side, it's going to add it no matter what. And then we're going to say tilde A. So what do we have to have? I'm going to say uh, actually, I'm going to say equal flips flip times then what do I want to do no, that's not what I want to do uh, I want to actually put this here no matter what again tilt percent oh here's another funky one so there mm -hmm. tilt bracket and then I'm going to say, if there's zero, I need a were. And then what do I do? If I do this, I just do another, I do a tilde semicolon. And I say was, and then I say tilde. Colon, semicolon, were. And then I'm going to close this. And then call X O to come back over here so I can explain what's going on here. So if I say format and I say tilde were, I guess I could have copied that, but might as well practice these funky things or tilde bracket. All right, this is conditional. So when you see these uh, tilde opening and closing brackets right here, like. I guess I should change my cursor because it's probably harder to see where it's at. Maybe that's why I'm having to highlight stuff because I don't have that little blinky box. Um, I don't want to be like that's what that is. So I'll do that some other time. Put my blinky box on. Format. And so if I was to say, can I just put a zero here? Oops. Like, all right. First off. Format needs a T or a nil, so that's wrong. This needs to be around uh, quotes. Man, I cannot type today. Uh, 
the control slash undo. So I'm undoing. You can also hit control X U or control X control U. I don't know. I used to always use that. Now I'm using this other one. So uh, yeah, it gets confusing. So now were. Now if I hit one, it's was. Anything else is going to be the other word. So this is zero. This is one. This is anything else. I want to say this only works with integers, which I wish it worked with other things, but I guess it'd be harder to tell what you're trying to do. So zero, one, everything else. So mm, the first one is zero. And then this right here would be a second one. If I wanted a third one, fourth one, fifth one, then everything else, then I just use a tilde colon. So I could come over here and say, uh, Tilt blah, let's say. I need a semicolon here. And then now that was, but then this will be zero, one, two. So if I was to put a two here, then it's blah. So you want to say the first one doesn't matter because it's inside this conditional block, which is zero. And then the next one, which is one, is going to be this. The next one, which is two, is going to be this. So it's always just tilt semicolon, tilt tilde semicolon, tilt semicolon. If I was only going to go up to like this right here, right, zero, one, two, three, then I wouldn't need this. But because I want someone to be able to type whatever else, then this tilde colon semicolon just matches everything else. So it's control L, control L, that, control X, O to get back over here where I was, and then close that uh, format string. And then I want to say tilde A. And then you, oh, I'm going to run out of room here. You guessed tilde A. And then I want a period and a tilde percent for a new line. And of course, my thing didn't end where I thought it was earlier going to be. And then I didn't run out of line after all, or out of room. So let's see here. Now we're going to put the head count. So head counts first. And then head count second. And then what the user guess is. And then close this. Control X, Control S to save. And so we're saying. The first head count is to decide if it's a were, it was, or it were. And the second head count is actually to show how many head counts there are. Because this wasn't going to show it. This is just the first one head counts just deciding which one of these to pick. The second head count is choosing this one. And I don't know how to do like up here what I was doing with the heads with this little back tracker. I don't know how to do that with anything else besides the P directive. I don't think, like, if I flip it here, that it will work. And so let's just say if I was to go like this. Mm. Well, it's just to copy that, let's say, from here. So I'll hit Control Space, Control E to go to the end of the line. Alt W to copy what I have highlighted. Control X O to come back over here and paste this. And then if I was to say one, 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 let's say, then there was one, you guess one. I don't think that if I come over here and put this right here, that I could get rid of one of these guys, but it'd be nice if I could. Yeah. So there's no more argument, so it's not it's not eating that. I don't know how to do that. So I hit Q to get out of the debugger. And then uh, Control L, Control L to get rid of all that junk. Just so you don't have to see it. That's why I'm putting a head count here twice. I just don't know like how to get around that. And then if I close my deal here, let's say. And I'm just going to say Control C, Control K. Yes, save that file. There's no errors. So I hit Control C, Control K, 
and notice that I have in package here. And this in package here, I guess when you hit control C, control K, it's compiling the whole file. And even if I come down here and hit control C, control C or whatever, it did this whole function right here. It knows what package I'm in, but I'm not in that package. Whenever you compile it, it doesn't throw you in that package. It throws the code in that package, but it doesn't put me in the package. So I actually have to come over here and retype that. Or I guess I could come over here, which might take me just as long. Control K to kill that line. Control Y to put it back. Control X O to come over here and Control Y to paste it. Then now I'm in that package, which at first this was kind of funky for me because this puts the code in the package, but it doesn't make you flip over to that package. So you have to type it yourself when you're in the REPL. So now if I was to say flip it, then flipping coin one time, how many times will it land on the heads? Uh, zero. If it were zero, you guessed zero. So I got it correct. And now if I was to say flip it and put one here, then notice it's saying flipping coin one time. Which that's what I did last time, so what do you do, right? How many times will it land on the heads? Uh, let's say one. It was zero, so I got it wrong. And so now if I say flip it 10 times, flipping coin 10 times, let's say it lands on the heads four times. There were six, you guessed four, so I got it backwards. Uh, notice that they're always saying where so far. So what I want to do is just do flip it a couple times, or flip it one, doesn't matter. There were, so try it again, one. Now you start wondering if it's even random. All right, finally, there was one. So notice there were one, there was one. And then on this other one, when there were six times, let's say, where was it? Here it is, so there were six. So that's working correctly. There was one, you guessed. All right. So I guess the next thing I wanna do is to kind of like put stats so when there's a couple flips you see some of those flipping let's say oh man I try to make these short videos and then I explain all the stuff and yap and move around and ramble and they get longer and longer so let's come over here after the intro prompt let's say I could have clicked up here earlier too I guess uh, sometimes I forget that I have a mouse, I guess. Being a vroom vroom user, in case you're not a vroom vroom user. Uh, defun, calculate, and then calculate flip stats. I, that's probably not a good word, but whatever. I, I don't want to sit here and try to think of what to put there. And then here, I'm just going to use flip times because last time I made it different, but it really doesn't matter. And then flips. So I guess you could say this is flip times is what the user's inputting and the flips is what the computer's calculating. And maybe you could use a con here, but you can also just use an or. And then, well, I was going to show how to type this out, but I can just copy it, I guess. I don't know, I did it in so many other videos, it doesn't matter. Because one, two, three, let's say, and if I came back up here and then said, uh, is it? Control space to highlight and then go down one, two, three. Uh, is three enough? And then I hit control X, R, T. Did that get rid of my or though? Where'd my or go? Let me get out of there. Control X, R, T. And equal. Looks like it's overriding that. It's giving me four instead of three. I miscalculated. Flips round times. Let's say flip times and 
I'm just gonna say like one fourth. And then I probably need three of these to close those. And then hit enter. Like I can't see my stock highlighting because they're all the same color. And then this one right here. I think I just want three of these and the last one will equal the last one. So here, I'm just gonna kill that and say, oops, equal, if I could type, flips, uh, flip times, and then one, two, three. And then of course I gotta come back over here and put my or, uh, which means all that's not indented correctly. So I could come over here and then say, control alt F, well space, but you know, like if I just hit control alt space, it highlights that whole defund. And then I hit equal, and it'll re-indent equal. I hit tab, and it'll re-indent that stuff. Oh, okay, so what I'm doing here, let me think before I start talking and forget to switch these guys here. And then let's just say three quarters. So let's just say like if I have 100, then this is 25, 50, and 75. And this would be the whatever's last 100 time, let's say. Um, if I calculate this like this, flips, so you just sort of round that stuff. So I think that's correct. So I'm gonna hit Control C, Control C to compile that. And then come down here in my loop. And this is where we said how many we have already let's see so i want to put it in between there i think so before that so i'll just hit enter one more time and then when i notice when i hit tab and my cursor is sitting right here it's it's not indented the way i want it to because there's this do here and you don't have to say do, 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 do. You can just have one do and then do several things. So if I say if, as I'm typing this, I can hit tab and it re-indented that. If I'd have kept typing and hit enter, it automatically re-indented at the end, but it's it might be long since I'm calling that function. So I hit tab in the middle. It's just sometimes when you tab in the middle like this, especially in the REPL, it'll try to tab complete. And so a lot of times I just ignore that until I hit enter, I guess, and let it automatically do that. So calculate flip stats. Is that what I called it? Yes, it is. So if, if calculate flip stats, uh, flip times, and then flips. And then what I want to do is do and then we'll format t and then i want to say here i'm just going to go ahead and use that other one if there's not a new line that's put a new line and so tilde a tilde a colon and that's just a printing a colon it has nothing to do with the directives and then tilde a again and then we're going to use the same thing we did earlier, the P directive that backtracks and then till percent to get a new line at the end. And then right here we need one, two, three, four, but since one of them is backtracking, we only need three. So here I'm going to put flips. And So I'll hit control X O to come over here and then I'm gonna hit alt shift period or less than or greater than whatever the period is the greater than, I guess it'll put me at the end of the buffer and then I'm gonna hit control L and I'm gonna hit control L one more time to get up to the top and notice I can keep hit control L. It's not deleting anything. It's just moving the, the cursor up down or down. I guess you could say top mid or bottom. Like I said earlier, and now I'm going to use a format uh, nil. At this point, I don't think it matters. It's like over here, but over my source file, I think I have to put a nil here if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 
So if I say format T and then say I, then notice he gives me high and gives me nil. Nil is the return back, right? But if I hit control D here to delete the T and then hit nil, then notice it just gives me the high, the string back. So here's what I was talking about, I guess. With that tilt A, it's for user output or some reader to read. Tilt S is something for lift to mess with. The same thing here, if I set like format T, then it prints out the high, but it returns nil. Here it's just returning the high, but this right here is something the Lisp can read back in. So that's when I guess when you want to use nil maybe is if you're going to read something back in or mess with it with Lisp again, which I'm going to do over here. So that's why I'm using a nil, let's say. And then what I want to do is to uh, explain what I'm fixing to do rather than type it out in the middle of explaining it. And then if I say 10, so uh, I believe the R stands for radial, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not positive about that, but if I hit zero, it says zeroth. If I hit one, notice I'm not using parent, parent, parent edit. My parent edit's messed up at the moment. Uh, you know, it'd be nice if it wasn't, but I'm, I don't know what happened, but pair edit mode is now messed up for me. So if I was to say like, like, yeah, you do whatever I want, put the parentheses in there. But uh, if I was to come back over here and hit enter, like it's not actually executing it. And there is a way to, like I did, you know, do a little hack to get around that. But if I was to hit alt X and what's it called? The sly return maybe. Sly and ripple return. Uh, look at me hitting the cursor keys. <laughs> uh, then notice it ran it. Man, I'm gonna have to turn that off next time. I just don't like the way it blinks all the time with that key casting on. So I could force it. You know, I created a shortcut that runs the sly m ripple return. Let's say, and then when I hit that, then it says first over here. But uh, I found, I'm just going to turn it back off. I found another thing to use. It's actually built in already without having to install something, but I can't remember what it's called at the moment that I was using my, to put my parentheses in, but you know, it's just never bothered me. I kind of like keeping up with my parentheses, I guess. Not that I like it or dislike it, but if stuff's going to get in the way, then whatever. Uh, pair edit updated it and I, added Sly company and a couple other things I have turned off right now because I'm just like learning them and somehow it messed up pair edit. I uninstalled it, did all kinds of stuff. I just can't get it back. And pair edits updated like at least five or six times since then. So I don't know what I did. Uh, so this radio is just taking the, you know, whatever number I put in here and turning into the text version of this, which I want to do over here, but I really don't want it to say, you know, one millionth. I want it just to say like, you know, I want it to type out first, second, uh, third, let's say. And with all the stuff they put in here, for whatever reason, I could, I don't know how to do that, you know, like, I don't know, I tried to look at it in the past and I just don't, I'm not sure how to do that. So The way I'm going to get around that at the moment is to use a subset. So like if I was to come over here and say reverse and now it's backwards, right? And then now if I was to come over here and say subsec uh, zero two, then it gives me what I want, but I still have to reverse that again. And now I get what I want. So now I could put, you know, 10 in there and it's going to give me 10. So if I put, you know, one over here, then it'll give me this for the first. And in Python, you can use like negative one and, you know, negative two and all these things in your subsects to, you know, when you're using strings to grab the last first, second, third, fourth from the last uh, characters. But I don't know how to do that in common Lisp. That's why I'm doing this ugly thing. There's another way to do this too, which 
uh, if I come back over here, let's say to this one, and I really don't want it to be that big. Let's just use 10. So the other way that I can think of to do this in common list, which I don't know by default, if it's built into the language to be able to index a string, which I think is basically an array backwards. I don't know how to do that in common list, right? So I think there's probably a library that will let you do that. There's Alexandria and CL string and CL STR. Or, I don't know. I've, I haven't messed with all these libraries. So I don't know if one of them does it or not. But I can't, I haven't, in the past, I haven't figured that out in Lisp yet. And I just don't want to try to like dig around. So the other way, which is, it's ugly, but this gets real long with your format. The other way to do it though, I want to say, if I was to say, let's say, let me just, by control, control and space that it highlights that sex B on alt W to copy that, because I have to use the same thing twice. So another way without having to reverse it, let's say, is to say subsec, and then uh, let's just paste this in here. Uh, I can hit control A and hit tab, it just puts me where I want to be. And then from here I could say, like, to get the last two, I'd say a minus. And then I'd say the length, if I could spell correctly, and then come over here and put two. Does that work? Spell the number of arguments. Uh, subset format T 10. And then do that again. Put the parentheses in the correct place. There we go. So this does the same thing, but the problem with this, I mean, I guess maybe in the code it's not going to matter, but like if I was trying to de debug, debug this and, and now I want to change this to one, then I'm going to have to do this twice, right? Over here in the code, it doesn't matter, kind of. And I want to say, when I look at this, I like the indentation of this better than if. I was gonna to try to indent this other one that I had, this right here. Like, if this format was really long, all this wouldn't fit on the one, one line, let's say. So I could say, uh, come over here, I'm gonna hit Control J so it doesn't execute, and then hit Tab. And then maybe I could hit, you know, this one more time and hit this. But that looks uglier to me. But at the same time, I only have to change this one time. So I'd say it's, you know, more convenient. It just doesn't look as pretty as far as the indentation goes. But it doesn't really matter which one I use, I guess. But I will use this one just because it would be more convenient if I was debugging it, let's say, reverse. And then right here, see now if I start typing my format, my format so far, and Maybe it wouldn't be a big deal if that's all I was doing, but I have all these till directives. And if I just had one line, two line, three lines for these guys right here, you know, one, two, three, this one's backpacking. So uh, now, but of course, this is what I'm typing, so it's not that long. And I really don't know which is the preferred way to do it. Like, whatever, I'm just going to do it like this. I haven't looked at enough people's list code to know. I just sit here and type stuff out myself. I need to start looking at more people's code bases. One, two, and then I had zero and two, right? Get the last two there. And then head count for the last one. And that closes that off. So if I say control CC, that didn't give me any errors. So, uh, and it's weird too, right? Because I'm breaking this out over here, but the break right here, this also uses the head count, and the head count's inside this let. So up here, when this function's defined, and because this let's inside this function, it's like lexical, it's local to this function, 
I don't have the head count over here. So, and also, do these functions want to have the side effects built into them or not? Uh, like, this or right here is just going to return true or nil. Like, those aren't things that I have. If I had flip times, if I put that in a let, let's say, then I don't know, I'm trying to see if I just put over here. Just, this is just the or, so it's either it does or doesn't. So if it does, then it's going to do this right here, I guess. You could say the format. All it's going to do is this format here. I don't know why I'm trying to explain this. Uh, like that, but if this is true, then this is going to happen. If it's nil, it won't. So now if I come over here and say, oh, that's going to be a long way away, ain't it? So I just undid with the control forward slash, control slash. I usually call it backslash whack, control whack, control slash. Uh, then now if I call flip it, then flipping coins one time. How many times will it land on heads? Let's say zero. Then the first time it flipped, it was a head. There was one, you guessed zero, so I got it wrong. But let's say I say, let's just do 10, because 100 is going to be too many. Flip it. How many times will it land on head? Six. Then, you see right here, the second, the fifth, and the eighth. Well, the second, the fifth were zero. The eighth had two heads, and the tenth. The last one had a third head. So there were three, you guessed six. Um, I guess the last thing I want to do is to come back, well, I was going to say, Control X over to go back over there. So I have my Control X down here. But I want to get out of that Control G to cancel. And then, uh, like, the screen's blinking because I canceled. Like, I don't know. Like, I have to find something side, side screencast to use, maybe. Uh, it's, it's, the blinking's kind of tacky. But it'd probably be worse than the stream, I guess. Um... The last thing I want to do is to control L. That's why I came back over here and canceled that. And I started talking and almost forgot. So control XO, get over here now. And then this time after, mm, I want to say, where's this going to close? So I still want this to be in my loop, let's say. So let's come over here. And yeah. It's nice because it's matching, so I know. Like, I want to get rid of that one. And now it's ma matching the let. But I still need to be inside my let, so I want to get rid of that. And now I'm in my loop. So I'm going to hit enter now. And. come back up here I hit the wrong button so if I come right here oh you know because the well, I already did that so I'm gonna hit control L here to get away from the bottom get me up here there we go uh, right here I'm in I'm closing the loop so I'm still inside my let, but I'm out of the loop. And therefore, this if has to have the parentheses because it's no longer inside the loop. Because I want this to happen after the loop, let's say. But it has to be inside the let because I'm still using some of the variables from there. This time I'm going to use an and. And so we're going to have to use the user's input uh which is this guy right here the user guess so user guess read line is reading this in and since that's a string read line brings in a string we have to parse integer uh the user guess and i'm gonna put junk allowed 
NFT. And that just means if someone types something else, it's not going to jump into the REPL. They might not know what to do, but it's not going to jump in the REPL. It's not going to jump in the debugger from that, let's say, because an integer wasn't entered. And then if it's, let's say, greater or equal to flip times, how many times I'm flipping, and uh, let's say, just say 10 is a good number. Then I just want to say format T. Wow, you are lucky, let's say. You are lucky. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. You were lucky, but you are lucky. Uh, I should have alt backed. So there was a was there. So when I was here, I should have alt back and then alt backspace and then type were since you was lucky. I guess I was lucky, but you were lucky sounds better in that case. Oops. So 200% for a new line and then close this, close that, close that, close that. Control X, Control S, Control C, Control K, just to compile the whole file, and make sure there's no errors. And then Control X, O over here. And so now if I say flip it, flip a coin one time. There were zero hits, you guess one, flip it again. Uh, one, so I got it wrong again. One, all right. There was one, you guess one. So it didn't tell me I was lucky because it's not greater or equal to 10. But now, if I could get lucky with 10 of them, uh, let's just say it's going to do, it's never going to be five, but let's try it. Oh, yes, it was. So there were five, you guessed five. Wow, you were lucky. So, of course, I can try to jump up to 100, but it'll be harder. But I guess I could put 100 here just to show the stats. And so if, let's just say there's going to be 40. Is 45 a good number to guess? 53, so see the 25th, it was 10, the 50th, 26, the 75th, there was 38 heads, and the 100th, there's 53 heads. So like, you know, here it's kind of close to halfway. Here it's really close to halfway. Here, maybe not, you know, still kind of close to halfway, but here it's pretty close to halfway again. Uh, and this number can jump a lot too depending on how many you put in there. So if I was to say a thousand, let's say, and then now what? Like, if I flipped a coin a thousand times, control L, sorry, I forgot not to get to the bottom of the file too close. And maybe here I should, uh, you know, too bad it's, I could come up here though, I guess, and hit control L here. Then now we can see everything. Alt shift, greater than, jump me down here. And then how many out of a thousand, let's say there's gonna be 400 and, 48 hits and there was a there was 501 uh so we could try that again and let's just say there's going to be you know 480 hits and then here you can see like you know how close they were to being halfway i guess at that particular time and i'm pretty sure like at some point Yeah, like still, they're still pretty close. Uh, let's say 425. There's 527. But, it, like, you know, just give you an idea if there was 2,000 hits, then let's just say there's going to be 999, 973. And then you just kind of have a guess of, you know, where it was at at the time. Uh,. I think that's all I want to go over. Can't think off the top of my head. Uh, I guess Control X O to come back over here, and just you know, if I'm here and I want to jump back, Control Alt B will jump to the matching parentheses, which, like I said, you can't really tell. Tell, but if I was to go back to the end again and then go back, you know, right here I have a extra lines so I get rid of those and then control XS whoops control G to cancel that control XS automatic I 
actually try to go into search. I guess that's, you know, control R will search backwards. So let's say I was looking for from. Now I'm at from. If I hit control R again, it'll try to find another from, but there's not one. Uh, this is kind of confusing too, because like, well, now I can hit control S and start searching forward. But if I hit control G, it's going to cancel. But sometimes I'll still be in that search. Uh, so control G, if I go to the top of the file, and notice I didn't put the extra new line here, but sometimes Emacs is just adding these new lines for me, and I don't know why it does that. Uh, I think I just hit the insert key on accidentally. But uh, control alt less than will jump me to the top of the page. And then if I was to hit control S, and let's say I was looking for read line. You know, I typed something again that's not in the file more than once, though. Control G. So... Uh, control S to start searching again. So, a flip. Flip's got to be in here quite a few times. So, Control S is going to keep taking me to these. The pink one's the one I'm at. And if I want to start editing this one, then I'll hit Enter. And now I'm at that spot. Uh, sometimes, whenever you're trying to search for something else, though, which it's not doing right now, but, so I'm not sure, like, if I hit Control S, Control S, and I hit Control G, and then hit Control S again, see it's blinking them out. Sometimes you have to hit Control G twice. And I'm not sure why it's not doing that, because it does that to me a lot. Uh, just keep in mind, sometimes you want to hit Control G twice to get out of the search you're in. Or else it's just, you know, canceling. Let's see if I can see. Like if I hit Control G here. All right, there it's because I didn't hit Enter. Uh, notice down at the bottom, it still has to flip here, even though I hit Control G. So that's to continue the search because I maybe because I didn't hit enter. So I'm gonna do that again. Control G to get out of here. Now if I hit Control S, I'm gonna type flip. And then I didn't hit enter yet, so I hit Control G. Oh, see it didn't do it that time. Well it did it a second ago. Well, so you got to see it once. I don't know why it does that sometimes. Um, I'm just going to try this one more time, because now I'm just, maybe because it's adding something, like it's, like I didn't hit that T right there, but maybe I did, I didn't mean to, so this T right here is sitting there, so somehow I matched something that's not there, which it sees flip right here, so maybe when it's this extra thing, then if I hit control G here, then see how it goes to flip and it's still there, so if I start typing, it's expecting me to keep typing Control G here with this extra stuff, it goes right back to flips. And if I wanted to start searching for count, let's say, then I'm adding this. So I guess whenever you type something that doesn't match, if you want to start looking for something else, like let's say I want to look for loop, when I hit Control G, it went to flip. So if I start typing loop, it's not going to be correct, right? So I hit Control G twice. And now if I hit Control S, now I can type for loop. So it's there, there we go. I didn't know I actually hit T. Uh, I don't think I did, but you know, it was far away from what I was typing. I'll type flip. I don't know how I know that it hit a T, but control G, control G. A lot of times if I'm searching, I just hit control G twice to get out of there because it doesn't always do what I expect, I guess. Uh, I think that's everything that's in my head at the moment. You know, I don't really want to do like in this video, uh, how to get around an Emacs, like with the control P's, control N's, alt, alt B's, alt F's. Uh, I guess I did do the highlight and the control XRT stuff. And then the highlight, I want to get rid of it, I hit control G. So anyway, we're bad.